the Credence and Bishop Show are huge supporters of gay marriage, especially hot, big boob lesbos. Mmm, yeah, that's the stuff. Only on CBRadioShow.com. Yeah, CBRadioShow.com, Credence and Bishop Show here with you. Also glad to be a part of the uh, Planet Platypus Radio Network. Uh, check them out at planetplatypus.com. Hi, Clay. Hi. How you doing? Great. How are you? I'm so much better now that I'm not autistic anymore. Yes. Well, we took a test, and now we know that you're not. Yeah. Feeling better about myself. All you had to do was go online and get a test, and then you feel better about yourself. You know, that's how that's how this whole thing started, was just going online. Yeah? So that's that's good that it came full circle. Oh. It, it solved itself the way it started itself. You got worried about it by going online, but now... Yeah. We cured you. Exactly. With online. The first cure mm-hmm. for Asperger's right here mm-hmm. on the Green's Bishop Show. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is take a test. That's right. And you will be cured instantly. Instantly. Snake oil salesman. That's what we are. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have on the show uh, Kelly Shabari. Uh, Kelly, how are you doing? I am doing really well. And I am so sorry that I wasn't able to be on the show last week. No, you're fine. <laughs> it's no all worries. good. No worries. It, it happens. It happens. Uh, you know, all the time. Uh, uh, either we we get a something or a line cross somewhere, or we mess up a number. Or, so trust me, you weren't yeah. the first. Okay. <laughs> and no hard feelings. I didn't pop your uh, kept trying to call, but kept doing voicemail charity. No, no, <laughs> definitely not. Okay, Kelly, yeah, but uh, we're glad to have you on. Me, personally, I'm glad to have you on because we have been interviewing porn stars for quite a while now. I I mean, at least, uh, you know, eight to ten years at least. And uh, we have yet to have uh, a plus-size porn star on. And plus-size porn stars, those are my favorite. And I'm I'm glad to finally have on a plus-size porn star. And And here I am. Yeah, how exciting. (laughs) And you know, especially you know, someone that's uh, that's taking that because to me, first uh, or maybe not to me, but it seems like in the uh, the the do we say the normal world? I guess uh, the 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 status quo. The the you know, it's it seems like a kind of a taboo. It's been a taboo for so long. You know, plus size. I mean, listen. There, of course, there's been plus size models, but uh, you know, you're really on the forefront right now. Uh, this has been a really good year. It really has. That's good. I thought last year was really good, and then like this year happened, and I was like, wow. So, yeah, this this has been a really good year for me. But it's also, you know, um, I it, it's also people like you guys who are like, hey, I like plus size porn. You know, it's it's people being open enough to come out and say that they like that. You know, because we're we've been told for so many years. Like when I first got in, one of the first things I said when it was suggested to me that I try it out, my first response was, I don't know any plus-size people in porn, you know, because, like, that's not what I saw. Right. All the stuff I saw on, like, late-night cable or in, like, men's magazines, like, they're all, like, you know, they're slender, they go to the gym six days a week, they eat really healthy, you know, they have implants. (laughs) Um, You know, they're, they're what we're told is supposed to be sexy, but, like, I've had a long history of having boyfriends and people telling me that they thought I was hot. So, like, you know, I, I was like, okay, so I have a sex drive and people consider me sexy, but uh, but then to be told that maybe I should try being in front of the camera was something I wasn't, you know, I didn't think was something that happened. And, like, seven years later, you know, there's plenty of people, especially, like, on social media, who are, like, coming out and saying that they like that. So I'm like, yes, this is great. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. So, what what yeah. made you want to you know uh, make the jump into the uh, adult film industry? Um, well, it was really something that was just suggested to me. I've been working in mainstream Hollywood, like behind the scenes. I've always been a behind the scenes person. I was a roadie for a bunch of years, um, and then I got in when I moved from New York to LA. You know, because LA doesn't really have a live uh, much of a live theater scene, so um, everything's filmed out here. So. Uh, when I moved from doing backstage work to moving to L.A., people were like, well, there's no, you know, there's no real, like, theaters that you can actually get a regular job at, so uh, try doing film. So I did that for about, I don't know, like, nine or ten years, and then in 2007, there was a huge writer's strike in Hollywood where, 
you know, like the writers went on strike, and they go on strike every four years every time there's a new contract. But um, this last one, like the actors got involved, and then like the crew got involved, and then the teamsters got involved, and so all the work dried up, and everything went out of town. Um, which is why we have reality TV, by the way. Yeah, well, I remember <laughs> that. I remember the writer's strike. It was terrible. The last one was really yeah. bad. And um, you can thank the, the writer's strike <laughs> for, for why we have Honey Boo Boo now. Damn so, it. Damn it. Damn um, them. <laughs> damn you, writers. Get back to work. Um, but uh, we all kind of sat around for like four or five months hoping that the, right, the, the strike was not going to last forever, and it just kind of kept going. And all the work went to, like, Michigan and Canada and uh, places like New Orleans and, and Georgia and New York, and it just kind of all moved out of L.A. Yeah. And so we're sitting around, and a friend of mine who is a weapons guy, like, he teaches, like, actors how to use weapons on set, um, he and his uh, girlfriend have done a lot of moonlighting work. And there's actually a lot of guys in mainstream Hollywood who are crew people who moonlight in the adult industry as other crew people like salvagers and, you know, lighting people. Right. Um, and he said, we were all sitting around and he said, you know, maybe you should try what we do on the side and try doing some porn. And my first reaction was, yeah, there's no fat girls in porn. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must be joking. You know, you must, you, we must just be like, just, you know, sitting around just shooting the shit. And he goes, no, 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 this is something that's like really coming up. And there's a bunch of websites that shoot bigger girls and they're not like a joke. You know, they are they all look hot. Um, and I said, fine, show me those websites. And so he showed them to me, um, and uh, they were based in Florida. And I said, fine, you know what? I'm not doing anything. I'm currently unattached. I, you know, uh, why don't I send my photos in? If they take me, I'll do it. And I kind of really meant it to just be like a, like a year sabbatical or two, you mm -hmm. know, just something to do while I waited for, like, work to come back to Hollywood. And now it's been seven years. <laughs> hey, that's that's fantastic thing about just sitting around shooting the shit and you find your career or what what you really want to do yeah. out of it. So that's really well, awesome. And, and, and really, it's it's been something that I've been doing for seven years, but it really has been kind of off and on because there's no there are a lot of companies that shoot plus size stuff. Definitely. So it it's not something that like I do every single month and it pays my bills. It's you know, now that I do marketing work for the industry, which is kind of cool because I get to stay in the business even yeah. though I'm not performing. Definitely. Um, I, you know, when I do get uh, hired to do a scene, it's kind of like, oh, cool, I get to go and be on set and have hair and makeup and wear fake eyelashes and, and do some fun stuff for a day. No, I... So my approach, so my approach, I guess, is a little bit different. Like, I don't see it as a career. It's I see it more like a really fun hobby <laughs> right that's a great mindset hell yeah yeah it's a hell of a I hobby get upset if i don't get hired <laughs> <laughs> right of course yeah I, you know but that's great too though because a lot of people uh you know in any kind of industry uh they just focus on that one thing and they don't yeah. see the other avenues of being still in that industry right. or, or still being in entertainment or, or whatever it, mm -hmm. it, all that all they focus on is okay i have to do 5,000 scenes this year, you know, to, to make X amount right. of dollars. Well, and I think also it, a lot of it has to do with, you know, a lot of the girls that get in are still really young. They're, like, in their early 20s. I didn't get in until I was in my mid-30s. Oh, wow, okay. So so I think, and, and because I also have, a, you know, a background in, in production before I ever got in front of the camera, like, I know from having done, you know, a lot of years behind the scenes, I know how crew people talk when you show up on set and you're not quite 100%, right. <laughs> you know? So um, I think that's, that's kind of given me a different kind of work ethic. You know, like when I do shoots, like I make sure that I'm well-rested. I make sure that I, you know, um, drink a lot of water and I show up on time and, you know, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm courteous to the crew and I'm not, I try very hard not to be much of a diva, and um, and and I'm you know especially in in adult, I'm so grateful for the guys because the guys don't get a lot of credit, but they do like ninety percent of the work. Right. You know, um, and a lot of girls I think they come in, uh, you know, a lot of them do is just being young. You know, they come in, they're told they're pretty, uh, it kind of goes to their head. The guys are just props, you know, and I never see it that way. I've never seen it that way. And those people get burnt out quick, though. You know, you, right? Like, if, yeah. if if you come in and you're an asshole and anything, the the only reason that you're there is that 
right now, you know, you're you're hot, and, and then right. th- that fades with with anything, you know. So if you're yeah. if you're nice to to other people, those people that you're going to be hopefully working with for the next ever how many years you want to be in the business, that's going to get mm-hmm. you a lot farther than being an asshole because yeah, well, a lot of guys, you know, in the business, whether they're directors or producers or male talent, they call it GPS, Golden Pussy Syndrome. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> like they think that you know, girls come in, they think that what they have is better or more special than anybody else, and it really isn't. You know, everybody, all girls have fun. <laughs> so, right. um, it's you know, like I've never thought that I was better or prettier than any other like plus size performer. There's there's plenty of other girls in the business um, who I think are prettier, um, but all all I have to do is try to like do the best performance I can. Right. Um, you know, because that's the other thing is there's so many girls. Like back in the '70s and '80s, there was, there were fewer girls, mm-hmm. so they all got all the work. Now there's so many girls. You know, now there's thousands of girls yeah. who are in the business, and they're all trying to get the same amount of work, and it's it's, it's very competitive. Kelly, do you think it's better for someone like you? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, having the look that you have. You know, uh, compared to if you were like the the cookie cutter uh you know air quotes porn star the 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 blonde uh with uh, the big fake boobs and stuff do you think it's better for someone like you because you have a a certain look that isn't going to be as easily replaced as you know I couldn't tell you uh you know the the newest uh blonde porn star right. you know or or whatever like that but I could tell you like the, the girls to have a different look or mm-hmm. that, that that do right. different things, you know. Like, I, I could tell you about your – I know Joanna Angel way more than I know whoever's the, the latest, like, 18 to 22-year-old right. blonde girl, you <laughs> Definitely. know. So, I, I think it depends on – you know, I mean, this is the cool thing about porn, right? The, the point of porn is to not find yourself a girlfriend. The point of porn is to find variety so you can, like, escape for a little bit or – have a fantasy, you know, if you if you do watch porn with, like, your partner. Um, so because of that, everybody has a different thing that they like. And so for some people, like, for that, that, that whole kind of, like, frat boy, college kid, maximum FHM reading guy, they're probably going to know, like, the newest blonde, you know, big dude porn star. And they're going to not know about me. Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be guys who have always liked bigger girls, and that's all they watch, and they're going to definitely know who I am. I'm saying, um, I'm saying like the shelf a, life, though. You know, like like you can there, you can easily find another blonde, you know, big boob, uh, fake boob chick uh, compared mm-hmm. to, to to someone like you. You know that that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely you know an anomaly because I'm the only uh, like. You know, plus size porn is a niche by itself, but out of that, I'm I'm currently the only Asian right. uh, that's doing as much work as I am. I mean, there's other plus size girls who are Asian who come and go, but I'm the one who's been around for the longest, I guess, right. and doing like, the biggest performances for the, the bigger companies. So, yeah, I mean, if you're into Asian girls and you like big boobs and you like bigger girls just in general, then I fit that. And so, and, and I don't really have much competition if you're looking specifically like Asian, big boo, big girl. Like, I'm it. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that's kind of cool. But, uh, but you know, there's, there's plenty of guys who are like, I love big girls, but I don't like Asians. So I like big blonde girls. I like big black girls. And there's, there's definitely girls that fit that, too. Now, you're on uh, the Penthouse uh, Forum. You're on the cover of Penthouse Forum. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, the... Today, is it the second or the third? Today, uh, today is, is the third. Yesterday was the last day it was on the stand. Really? Okay. So now the only place you can get it, you can get it you know, online through Penthouse. You can get like the PDF. You can buy that. Um, but if you want a physical copy, I have, I think, like a dozen copies left. They're all available through my site. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm keeping two of them. <laughs> so <laughs> of I can course. look at them when I'm 80. Right. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I do have some limited copies that are still hard copies that are available. But it was funny last week. You know, I, I went on social media and I said, "Hey, you know, it's your last week." And there was this mad scramble 
It's like people going, I went to all the 7-Elevens and I couldn't find any. Where can I go? And then like other people would chime in and go, oh, I found mine at Barnes & Noble. Or I found and then somebody found them at like an electronic store. Like really? a Best Buy nice. kind of store. Like five, I don't know if you guys have Fry's Electronics in uh, on the East Coast, but here in LA, there's like, it's a small, it's a chain of electronic kind of Best Buy type stores. Right. And, um, and, but not just consumer electronics, it's more for like the geek crowd, like you can buy like, motherboards and things like that. But apparently, they sell penthouse because geeks love pervy stuff. Right. And um, <laughs> there are a couple guys who are like, I found two copies. I bought both of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was really funny. Yeah. So that's... Very, also very kind of like, yay team, yay go, you know. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> you became a collector's item. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You... Yeah, you're there at the uh, at the the the, the niche, uh, you know, uh, nerd store, right? Uh, yep. That's yep. Weird, that's weird that they have uh, penthouse though. I could totally see N- that. Nerd now. porn, man. Yeah, nerd that's fan- porn. Fantastic. I'm, I'm nerdy. I love porn. Hell yeah, I'm nerdy and uh, I'm definitely into porn. So yeah. Uh, Kelly, do you have like? Uh, and then you said that you know you can really pick which uh, films and stuff. Uh, are, do you have any films coming up, uh, or are you just? Uh, um, I have, uh, I've been really lucky, you know, obviously I've, you know, I've been in for seven years and now I'm kind of at the point where I know all of the performers or a lot of the, the male performers in the business and I know a lot of the companies. So, you know, when I first got in, I kind of like a lot of the other girls is you don't know who you're getting paired up with. You don't really have a choice on who you're working with. Um, and especially for plus size because a lot of the guys don't necessarily do plus size work. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not like their thing. So, uh, now that I've been in for this long, um, I'm working on a project right now where I'm allowed to pick the male performers I'm working with. And that's probably going to come out in the fall. But the the next project that, that's coming out is um, we just wrapped right after AVN. Uh, Wicked Pictures has a contract performer and director named Jessica Drake, who's absolutely amazing. Yeah, we, Jessica's um, been on the show a yeah. uh, million times. She was just on the show two weeks ago, so... Yeah, and Jessica's great, right? Yeah, so fantastic. she she's not only just an amazing performer, but she also is a sex educator, and she has a line of sex ed videos called Guide to Wicked Sex. And, you know, like most sex ed videos, they have, like, one for threesomes, one for how to give a blow the job, you know, one to um, how to have anal sex. But um, she didn't have one for plus size sex. And, in fact, most companies, they're actually, they're, if you actually look online, there's some blogs, about plus size sex. There's a couple of books out there about like plus size communication, like relationships and that kind of stuff. But there's never been a DVD. And so last year, I think like a year and a half ago, I hit her up and I said, hey, you know, I know you have this sex deadline. I, would you consider doing one for plus size people? I know Wicked doesn't shoot plus size porn, but would you be interested in that? And she immediately said yes. And, and that's coming out uh, June 25th. So at the end of this month. Now, you said plus-size people. Now, does this have plus-size men in it as well, or is this just plus-size women? You know, it was really funny when we were casting. Plus-size women, you know, are so easy to find because there's plus-size porn. There's a lot of just reaching out to the performers that I like, and I like working with who are, uh, you know, good performers and, and saying, hey, you know, would you like to be part of this project? Um, guys are harder because there aren't any plus-size guys in the business. I mean, there's a couple. Um, but they're mostly directors. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I put out a call. Uh, I put a casting call out on a couple of different sites and said, hey, you know, we're looking to do this, like, plus-size sex relationship movie. Um, please submit your information if you're interested. And so we kind of reached out to, like, just the regular community. And we had a lot of people send in their photos. <laughs> but... Um, but then we actually called them out and said, hey, you know, you have a great look. We'd like to have you be part of the project. They all backed out. Oh, wow. Like, it was, it was all like they, they wanted to be. It's like guys just in general, they're, you know, they're, they all will hit you up. Like, I, I get guys on Twitter all the time, and, I, and I'm sure that all get this. You know, where guys are like, hey, my girlfriend thinks I'm great in bed. I should totally be in porn. Um, but they just want validation. Right, right. But when you actually say, yeah, you know, come on down on such and such a day, and we'll totally use you, they completely get cold feet. Huh. Now, is so it, when the movie when the movie comes out, there's going to be a handful of guys who are like, "Damn it, I could have been in that movie." Yeah, they missed an opportunity. But, yeah, but um, but we still did try to get some plus size guys in the movie. So uh, the way the movie set up is there are scenes in the movie which are you know like positions, and then there's 
uh, like three hardcore scenes, kind of like a bonus scenes that you can watch with or without commentary. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are all done by porn stars. But we also, especially for the plus size community, we wanted to include like communication and body confidence issues and uh, exercises for that. So for that, we were able to get two plus size couples where the guy and the girl were both plus size but weren't performers. Mm-hmm. And um, have them do like body confidence exercises. So there's like some bits about massage. There's some bits about how to talk to each other. Um, and so we do have plus size guys in the movie, but they're not naked. One of them's in a swimsuit, though. Oh, what like <laughs> a, like a speedo or like a... <laughs> no, like some trucks. Okay. Right on. Because uh, you know, I uh, I used to like to wear a speedo. I lost it somehow. I I. Myself, I'm a plus size man. Yes, I'm, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, five ten. Uh, I think I'm about uh, about uh, two eighty right now. Uh, plus size. You're you're what we call a BHM. Uh, what is that again? Okay, so so big women are BBWs. They're big, beautiful women. Right. And men, the male level is BHM, which is big, handsome men. Oh, okay. See, I, I always yeah. wondered if there was one. If there was no, nah, you know, there's a word for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's that you yeah. have a label now. There you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, that's, uh, I always wondered that. That's, that's uh, See, so now you can tell everybody you're a Now, one of the questions <laughs> that we had uh, from uh, 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 one of our listeners last week, whenever mm-hmm. we said we are going to have you on, uh, is there like a certain, uh, you know, I, I know you never ask a lady her, her weight, but is there a certain like uh, way that you see yourself that you're like, okay, I can't get too much heavier than this, like this is my stopping point, uh, you know, or, or, you know, is there, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, is there a, uh, uh, like, okay, maybe I need to diet a little bit. I'm getting too, too heavy. Or is it just like, you know, you're fine with the way that you are totally, or is it like a health thing? Like, well, not that I have an issue with how I look. It's just, I, I want to be able Mm -hmm. to do this or that. To, to yeah, there's, there's actually there's a couple of things. It's really funny. You know, you would think that just because you're already a plus-size performer that if you put on a few pounds, people would be like, oh, well, you're still plus-size. You right. know? Um, but uh, a few years ago, I put on some weight um, for a bunch of reasons, mostly because I was just eating a lot. <laughs> and um, and uh, And it showed on camera. It was really funny. Even with the family, they're like, "Wow, you put on some weight," but they didn't say it in a negative, in a in necessarily a positive way. And I was like, "Wow, I didn't realize that putting on weight was a bad thing." In plus size sport. Yeah, that's weird. Um, but I think I think that fans like to see you in a certain way, and they want to keep you in that way because they liked you the first time they saw you. Mm-hmm. That um, makes sense. For me, uh. Yeah, there's obviously like parts of my body that kind of like, ah, uh, you know, this this outfit would fit better or would look better if I didn't have as much here. You know, like if right. my stomach wasn't as, big, it would look flatter and it would look cool. Um, but I've, you know, I've never really kind of beat myself down for my size. I've, I've you know, when I was younger, I had bullies who kept telling me I was fat, mm-hmm. and. And that was when I was in Japan. And then I moved to the States and realized I wasn't all that big. Mm -hmm. I was just big in Japan. Right. You know, when you compare myself to, like, the people that I was going to school with at the time, they were all smaller than me. Um, But I was also taller, you know, um, because I wasn't, I'm only half Japanese. I was like five, I'm I'm five foot seven, which is tall for for Japanese. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then when I came to the stage for college, I realized, wow, I'm kind of around the same size as most of the people I'm going to school with. And so I never really beat myself up. I had a lot of people around me that, that tried to beat me up for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you know, I've, I've never really uh, wanted for boyfriends. I've always had, a, you know, um, guys who found me attractive. And so um, I've never... Yeah, I've never really said, oh, this should be this size or this should be that size. Um, uh, it, it, you know, so I think for me, my tipping point, <laughs> if you want to call it that, is if I can't do certain things in a comfortable way, like if I can't bend over to tie my shoes without getting out of breath, mm-hmm. you know, that or if I, um, if I can't get a good night's sleep because my breathing is, is hard. 
you know, like that kind of stuff. Because right. um, when I was heavier, I did, I, you know, I did snore. And then when I lost the weight, the snoring stopped. So, like, little things like that. Um, but I've never really cut myself down for being plus size in general. What is uh what does uh Kelly Shabari like to do on her off time when she's not uh doing business uh stuff? I like to take naps. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. I like naps myself. Mhm. You know, it's really funny. I um this this has been a really really busy year and I and I'm so grateful, but the problem with being, you know, cuz I'm I'm in my 40s now and now I'm kind of like, wow, I really just, all I want to do is take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, but I'm a foodie, you know. Um, I love, like, really good food. I don't have to have a lot of it, but I like really good food. Um, I love music, um, so I love going to events that have, you know, live music. Um, and I love traveling. Where's which, which sounds like a dating profile, right? Yeah, like, it's it does. Like, oh, I like long walks on the beach, and we <laughs> like, you know, candlelit dinners. Which are great, <laughs> but um, ultimately all those things are, hey, I just want to be away from my computer for a few hours. Definitely. That's good, though. Yeah. Do you have any major, like, trips uh, planned? That, like, me, whenever I go somewhere, I'm sure you're the same way, too, to me that you said you're a foodie. Like, like uh, say, like, if uh, I'm going to, I don't know, Florida, right? And because mm-hmm. uh, I was in Florida two weeks ago, and you know, I, I start, wherever I was going, I was like, oh, I want to see like what places, what good places there are to eat, you know, in this in this area. What what must I, uh, you know, ingest yeah, uh, I, while I'm there? Food. Yeah, local food, local spots are are great. And and for me, like I love like hole in the wall places that you just that only the locals know. Yeah, no, yeah, those are the best. Yeah, love those. I agree. If you're. Um, but but lately, like all my travel has been work related. Like I, I've done Exotica in Atlantic City. I'll be going to Exotica in Chicago in, in uh, July. Um, I'll be coming to Florida twice uh, this year. I'll be coming. I'm a guest of honor for FetishCon in Tampa in August, and then I think I'm coming back for Night Moves because I was there last year. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, good um, stuff. Uh... But I think that might be my only travel this year. Hmm. Well, you know, still, like you said, it's all business stuff, but that's good, though. Yeah. You know, it's... it's... Yeah, absolutely. And then and then I can take a nap. <laughs> naps are always awesome. You can take, you can take naps in all those places you're going. <laughs> exactly. Naps try. all over the map. There we go. But, uh, Kelly, yeah. thank you so much for coming on. And how can, uh, you know, our fans uh, find out more about you? Um, I am a total, and I've said this, you know, for years, I'm a, I'm stalker friendly, so I'm very active on social media. So people can hit me up on either Twitter or Facebook. I'm Kelly Shibari on both. Um, I and I don't have a membership site, but I have a free fan site, which is where people can buy that penthouse forum, um, as well as like DVDs, and that's also where I like post my appearance announcements. And that's Kelly Shibari Kelly, <clears throat> thank you so much for coming on the show, and uh, I look forward to having you on again. Absolutely. Um, I think. Uh, I think we were going to give away a copy, weren't we? Oh, really? Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't get that. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, of the uh, Pinhouse Forum? We can definitely do that. Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah, we can definitely do that. We will give uh, We'll give one of our lucky listeners, we'll uh, have that. Uh, will this, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, thanks so much. for. Is this out of your private stock of the uh, 12? It is out of my stock. Oh, that's awesome. Out of my 12. Oh, very <laughs> nice. That's even, that's even yeah. better. Yep, it'll come signed, and I'll ship it personally. Well, great. Uh, well, we will give one of those away, so uh, we'll we'll give you the information about that whenever we get it. But, uh, Kelly, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll talk to you again, okay? Okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. Kelly Shabari right there. Very good interview. Definitely very nice. Very nice. Very, uh, very... Uh, it's uh, interesting to, to get inside the mind of a, you know, a niche, somebody that's in the niche uh, adult part of you know but she's mainstream now she's going yeah. mainstream yeah so like good. she completely went over it's crazy well clay we have uh we have done it yet we again did. me and you yeah yeah we did good work today yeah we found out that you don't have asperger's yeah Can i you... gonna say that's a that's a I, I lost the label and you gained one you bhm uh bhm minus asperger's plus big handsome man mm-hmm all right. Well, next week, uh, like I said, we're going to give away that uh, 
the autograph uh, thing from uh, Kelly Shabari. Uh, autograph thing, excuse me. Autograph uh, Pals Forum yeah. by Kelly Shabari. I'd like to thank our producer for keeping us informed of yes. the things that we're giving away. Yes, thank you, Mikey. Mikey for Absentee us know. Mayhem. That's where he is. He is uh, filling out his information so he can get that <laughs> autograph, the penthouse forum. He's like, I'm going to be the first one on it. It's a loophole. He wasn't here today. He qual- he qualifies as a listener. Yeah. So no, we'll get it to an actual listener, of course. Uh, but uh, with that said, you got anything uh, you want to say, Claire? I uh, love you guys, and I will see you next week. I watch next week's episode of Game of Thrones, even though you already are. It's going to be fantastic. I'm not going to say it's going to be all about the wall, but it's going to be all about the wall. All right. There you go. And this is from a guy with Asperger's. Well, you know, uh, who kicked uh, who kicked Asperger's ass today? Mm-hmm. He had Asperger's, but now he doesn't. Now Asperger's zero has me. Zero. Asperger's has Clay. Well, with that said, I'm say see you later, Master Bader. Gotta be keep in touch with yourself. Some, some, some. See you. Bye, bye.